My long struggle was at last being rewarded as this new style of painting slowly evolved. With these works I was looking back at my happiest years as a young man, free to explore the landscapes of Provence with my friend Emil Zola. On leaving school I had studied drawing while dreaming of being an artist in Paris, the centre of the art world. My mother, as always, supported my ambition, but my father insisted I studied law and work in his bank. I hated it. We finally pushed him into surrendering and I left Aix for Paris, but he only gave me a pittance. This is how he became rich by being a miser. I had no money to buy clothes. My fellow students jeered at my provincial appearance and sudden accent, gave me the brain of an ox. I didn't care. I enjoyed being different. My moods range from dark to light, Prussian blue through cobalt to rose madder, up then down, purple lake. Absinthe sometimes gave comfort but it failed to obliterate my embarrassment at the naked models in the life class. I spent my days in the Louvre and the Luxembourg, copying and copying, learning from the masters of my vocation. At first my paintings had been violent and dark, like this self-portrait from back in 1866. Although I had no time for Manet and his crowd, I must admit the Impressionists did have an effect on me. I lightened my palette and everything became calmer. Fortunately, Pissarro shared his experience with me. He was nine years older, but we spent a long time working together in the open air. Part of his advice that we should burn down the museum I gradually became disenchanted by the vagueness, lack of perspective and speed of execution of the Impressionists. Being more interested in nature, I did not want to portray factories and trains and the rest of the modern world as they did. In my beloved, unspoiled countryside, I worked slowly, methodically, spending more time studying the landscapes rather than looking at my canvas. Nature is everything. It's job to stimulate, not to be imitated. The public, the salons, and even the supposedly enlightened collectors hated my work. But I knew that one day I would astound, astonish, amaze Paris with just an apple. Life studies were always a problem, not only because of my continuing embarrassment, but because models were so expensive and I painted as slowly as I would a still life. Then the problem was solved. I had Hortense. She was patient and understanding, and gave me a new confidence as she posed naked. Through her, I was also reminded of my lessons on the importance of a human face in art. moved to Lestat so I could avoid conscription, and then we lived in both Paris and Provence. She bore me a son, Paul. Mother knew of my secret family, but when my father finally found out, he once again cut my allowance. Only when he died years later did I become financially independent. Eighteen ninety five was my year of triumph. I was given my first solo exhibition of one hundred and fifty paintings. It was such a success of the public it made me wonder if I had gone wrong somewhere. Was I too conservative? I don't know. I didn't attend. Degas, Renoir, and even Manet admired my work. 
but I'm not sure they understood. I had moved beyond them. I showed the crystalline solidity of my subject, not just impression, and I used my powerful feelings to uncover the essence of things. I threw out the old oppressive dated rules of single point perspective. Neither did I give a sense of depth by change of tone which destroys the fact that colour is colour. Tilting planes and a change of the point of view within a painting gave the sense of depth. These planes created expanding and contracting forces, push and pull. So my years of experimentation led to a new, modern way of painting. It was not only the reliving the joy of my youth that kept me working in Provence. It was the light. The harsh light created silhouettes that had colour. Cerulean and cobalt blue, burnt sienna. The light made objects flat. If the weather kept me in the studio, I returned to my still life. Apples, domestic objects, and more apples. They are not just symbols, they are practical. I had to give up trying to paint flowers because they wilted and died before I could finish. Senses, not thought. Brush in hand, I studied, for example, a tree, long and hard. This optical perception blended in with my memory of other trees. Then, with my brush, I made a mark. Slowly, I made another mark alongside, then another and another. Finally, in blocks of colour, I had created a new tree. I had captured the air, the light, the whole subject of the composition. I am now sure that if I am not understood in my own lifetime, I will have my successors. I am the father of a new school of painting. In my continuous search for perfection, I paint Mont Saint Victoire again and again. Even in Provence, when I glimpse Mont Saint Victoire, I long to be in Provence. In the quarry, an epiphany. A rock is a rock is a rock. Today I am off to view Mont Saint Victoire again, hoping to complete my current interpretation. I trust I will not get caught in another storm. If I get drenched in my state of health, it could be fatal, 